We're back with our final segment of the screen team, and it's here on today's Talk 930 KWOC. We've got Tracy and Sabrina in the studio as we um, do our last Halloween flick of this evening. We're going to be doing uh, the brand new Poltergeist. This one came out uh, this year, and it was actually released in the summertime, which was kind of a weird date for them to release it. I'm not sure why they did it in the, at the end of May, but uh, but they did. And uh, it's new to DVD, and uh, we're getting ready to talk about it. Uh, first off, before we get into this one, the original Poltergeist. Were you guys fans of, of, of that one? Absolutely. I loved it. It's one of my favorite movies. Really? Yes. So so coming into this one, obviously expectations are high. Extremely high. Yes. Tracy, what were your initial thoughts on this I, version? Well, I didn't like that the names were changed. It was a remake. They could have done the same names. They've done that with other movies. The little girl, adorable, kind of. Mm-hmm resembled the original she kind of had like the same kind of like hair structure yeah hair structure i thought she was like a nod to the little girl but she had black hair well the entire movie was kind of Mm -hmm. yeah yeah Yeah, the entire movie was a nod there was i've seen so many movies (laughs) (laughs) there was scenes where the teenager does the same kind of crying and holding her hair back yeah um the different Things that were said, this house is clean. Different, yes. There was whole lines and scenes yes. that were recopied. Mm-hmm. But it wasn't the ones that I really liked the most. I didn't like the Kerrigan character as opposed to the woman who did the original Poltergeist. And I don't know her name, but little, little short lady. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, she's hard to, she's a hard yeah. one to top. <laughs> yeah, that's true. And she, but that was, that was iconic. The way she said, you know, this house is clean. No. He can't do it. He can't pull it off. So that was a disappointment for me. Yeah, that's I, very true. I can't remember because I saw this in May with you, Sabrina. But did did they have the line? You know, there he. Did they have that line? They did, but it was just there here. Oh, it was just kind of. Yeah, it was a letdown. Not as dramatic as as the original, right? And there was not the build up. There was a little bit of a nod when they talked about the can the kind of arrogant camera guy said, "Oh, I saw." A, piano chair moved 10 feet across seven hours it took yeah seven hours yeah and and that was you know mentioned in the first movie and then they did a close-up on the chairs and you're thinking oh something's gonna end the chair flies across the room right so that's you know a little bit kind of a nod to that scene but there was no setup like there was in the first one right there was a big setup joe beth williams just made it wonderful with her enthusiasm and craig t nelson's arrogance and Machismo. I'm jealous that you can throw all these names out there like that. That's impressive. Yeah, man. I, I, can, I stink at that. <laughs> I can barely remember the character's name, let alone the actor. Anyway, I'm sorry. I cut you off. Oh, I'm, no, I'm, just, my bad. Just impressive. I don't like the the guy that played the dad in this movie. Yeah. Sam Rockwell? You don't like I mean, Sam? I guess, I don't remember what else I've seen him in, and I guess he was fine in those, but yeah. he Craig T. Nelson just had that that manliness that you you rooted for him in the first movie and same time wanted to cuss him you know (laughs) and it was kind of his fault because he was part of the development team for the house yeah and with this one that he was just kind of a weenie (laughs) yeah he was (laughs) but i loved the switch up with the little brother now he's the main character and he's gonna show that he's brave and i loved the scene where they went into the closet and you actually got to see what was in the closet yeah that was my favorite part about the whole deal. Was that was the that was something we didn't get originally. And I always, as a kid growing up, that was what I wanted to know was what was in there. What's on the other side? Yeah, <laughs> and the idea that it's just like here, here but not here. And yeah, all these writhing spirits. Just a real optical illusion that just was, I guess, intended to create that feeling of lostness. Mm-hmm. I th- what I came off of that other realm was they're here now with us and we just can't see them and yeah grasping at things and just, oh and that was that was creepy to me that made the movie it was okay after that yeah tracy so. did you see this in in theater or did you see it on uh, on dvd i went and seen it in theaters mm-hmm. and then i rented it again night before last make sure i was up to date on anything <laughs> that's probably a wise idea <laughs> so so Brina, you saw this in theater with <laughs> yeah. with me i had the pleasure of falling asleep on this film he did in the theater <laughs> i get that people must be listening to me and I'm like man you sleep a lot in, on on films and i kind of do but i'm jealous because he can just fall asleep yeah so i'm i'm not the best guy to uh to make a review on this but i, I will say that i was awake for the part where the the clown 
you know does his thing and i couldn't i couldn't the clown doll the clown yeah. doll i couldn't I, which is I, a nod I to my, the original that I, happened there i buried my head in your <clears> shoulder it just wasn't the happened. same no, they this, didn't do it the same and and i i'm getting the impression that the people who created this movie realized that the ger- there's still a generation that saw it the original fell in love with it and we're going to be extremely critical so there's there's like a rule of thumb if you can't do it better do it different but make sure you pay your respects and i think that that's what they tried to do with this movie <clears throat> because there was so much of the original movie that you got a sense of you got a reflection of but yet it was updated there was a a, a quad camera that was sent into the other realm you know and yeah. And yeah, the rope was there, but you know, the, originally there was nothing. It was just person and interference on the cell phone, right? And th- so, and cell phones. <laughs> yeah, um, there was just so much modern technology involved in it, and and GPS trackers. For how number. would they have done? How would this occur now compared to then? And so, updating the movie was sort of a requirement to get all that technology into it because, yeah, we wouldn't do it the same way now as they would have done it then. But I think that there's just no replacing the original. And and a perfect example of that was Footloose. When they tried to remake Footloose, it just wasn't the same. Mm-hmm. I don't think this movie was as good as the original. I don't want to see it again. I want to keep the original. But I think I'm showing my age in saying that because I'm sure there were plenty of young people out there that thought that was totally acceptable. And if they go back and watch the original, they'd be like, God, so lame. You know, I think it's a generational gap and, and they probably were somewhat successful in, in reaching the audience that was current on well, I things. Think part of the fear in this movie is being a parent and I've lost my child. Yeah. That's like, I watched uh 1408 with my son and my son, that's not scary at all. And, and it was just because it, the fear was, I've lost my child. Which he can't relate to. Right. Right. Generation gap. I think that was part of this fear is I think parents will enjoy it better than children will. Yeah. Younger parents. You yeah. haven't seen the original. <laughs> <laughs> so let me ask you guys. This is probably a difficult question for you guys. But do you think this movie would have been better if it would have been maybe a continuation of the original? Uh, yes. Movie instead of it being... I do. I think so. Instead of it being a remake? Yes. There was sequels to the original. Mm -hmm. And they actually even had a Mm -hmm. scene from the third one where in the third Poltergeist, there's puddles and you get sucked down into there to another realm and they... I totally forgot that. (laughs) The third one is completely a mystery to me. But if they would have had maybe Caroline growing up and being an adult and now having... You know, like in the original, the grandmother in the third movie Yeah trying to teach Carol Ann about what to do with these spirits and yeah had they done it that way I think it would have been really good I wonder if they didn't go that route because a poltergeist did create three other you know two other movies Mm -hmm. and b two members of the cast serious members of the cast were you know they died before the movies were ever completed who was the other one I know the little girl passed away there was an old man in the second one See the one that was singing? Yeah. He was, he was creepy. creepy. Really? He yeah. did a very good job being scary. Really? Yeah. He was good. I've only seen but the first one. Died, so. You know, yeah. so so there's characters that it was such a big uh deal in the in the media that everybody knows that character, that little girl died. Mm-hmm. You know, and so do you accept the idea that her character lives on or not? Yeah. Did they even nod to that in the third one? No. No. So What did she pass away from, do you remember? It was uh, physical ailments that yeah. were unknown at the time. Like, you, she didn't know. Yeah. I can't remember. What, I think it had to do with her heart, but I'm not sure I think exactly. So. Okay. <clears throat> All right. It's uh, Poltergeist, so uh, probably rent it or rent something else for the Halloween season. I'm sure there's other movies out there you could choose, but I can't be too hard on it. There's way worse movies out there than <laughs> this one. So, <laughs> Tracy, should people give this one a, a rent for, for the Halloween season? Oh, I definitely think so. We actually going to watch the original so that my kids can compare the differences. Cool. I'd be curious to hear what they have to say. We'll have to get them on for the. <laughs> we haven't reviewed that one, up. so I don't think we have a review that. You'll have to one. check your how many movies have we seen in the last five years? We're almost up at we're almost up to seven hundred, man. That's so. crazy, yeah. All right, so uh, that's the screen team uh, for this week. We'll review more movies next week. Uh, next week we'll have Michael Bowling on the show. We're going to review the first. 
movie that started it all for the Saw franchise. Oh, uh, Saw number one. Saw number one. We're, the <laughs> we're going to uh, also review White House Down <laughs> with uh, your boy Channing Tatum oh, yeah. and um, <laughs> Jimmy Fox. <laughs> and we're going to finish things up with an old school I don't even know. It's like a superhero film that has some horror elements a little bit. Uh, it's a movie called Dark Man from 1990 with Liam Neeson. It's uh, directed by Sam Raimi, who did Army of Darkness and, and Spider Man movies. All that movies. Poltergeist. And uh, yeah. He did this Poltergeist. Mm hmm. All right, uh, so that's coming up next week at 6 p.m. Remember, you can check out the Screen Team on our website at ScreenTeamPB.com. For Tracy, Sabrina, and Chris, we are the Screen Team on today's talk, 930 KWOC.